just know too many people who've been raped and assaulted. Too many, too many. <laughs> and to care about them so deeply and to see this same stuff happen over and over and over again. To hear yet again somebody was told that it was their fault, that they should have done something differently, that they were asking for it, that they had it coming. And that enrages me. And I really remember being about 13 or 14 and seeing girls that I had grown up with. You know, I remember them when they were 11 and now they were being called sluts and whores and uh, easy and tramps. And I thought, but they're the same people that I knew. What has so drastically changed? And nothing had. It was just uh, somebody disliked them enough to give them that reputation and then other people felt like it was entertaining to participate and it was really really sad. Going into college I think I definitely expected something very different. Um, I think in my mind I was expecting this collegiate experience that was purely academic that everyone was on the same mission that I was which was to get great grades and obtain a great job um, but then I got here and I realized that my academic vision not so much it was more so the party scene. One involved going into the basement of this really dingy house. Um, there were football players in one end and basketball players in the other end. And um, these people were just kind of standing on the perimeters, like almost as if they were scouting out like who they were going to prey on. I've been sexually assaulted multiple times, but the, the biggest and hardest one, I was 18. And um, I didn't tell anybody because immediately I already felt like it was my fault. I already felt horribly ashamed, embarrassed, um, in part in denial, and felt, you know, of course this must be my fault. I must have done something wrong. I must be the wrong kind of person. If only I'd acted differently. Uh, and that stuck with me for such a long time. And, and that's not all gone. I, I don't know if it ever will be gone. I wouldn't have described what I was wearing as provocative. I was actually more covered than most of the women I was around. You know, it was a struggle for me in my head too, thinking, well, I know that this is supposed to happen to slutty girls and provocative girls, so did it also happen to them and I just didn't know it? Um, so it was, a, it was a really challenging place to be in my head, going back and forth with these messed up messages of how you dress matters. My parents have always been really supportive and will do pretty much anything for myself and my sisters. They're both older than me. They live in New York City and they're really supportive if I ever just need like someone to talk to or just have fun with. I think I expected to come to college and find like my Prince Charming um, just like right away. I think that I ended up meeting the wrong guys, um, you know, and it was by no fault of my own or anything. It was just who I met. And a lot of these guys were just in it for like sex or, um, you know, kind of not really interested in learning about who I was. I've been doing grassroots sort of activism in the communities I live in for, oh goodness, almost 10 years. It was this wonderful world where there were so many opportunities to get involved in projects, organizations at so many different levels, uh, executive levels of organizing, one-off volunteer events, so many different causes, so much information, so much free knowledge. Women are, are, are increasingly and continuously taught that they shouldn't really have that much of an active sexuality um, and that men need to be the ones chasing, that women need to be the ones running away. Uh, and eventually that all works itself out. Well, it doesn't. We continue to see sexual violence in our communities. We continue to see people who are taking messages that they've learned through life and living them, breaking consent, not going to get consent, and thinking that that's still okay otherwise. And we deserve to feel safe, and we deserve
reserve the right to walk wherever we want, wearing whatever we want, acting however we want, without fearing that some creep is going to take it as an invitation. Basically what brought me to this cause is just being a woman and living in this society and dealing with rape culture. I am very frustrated and sick of the fact that the way we dress, the way we talk, the way we act is constantly put under scrutiny. The summer of 2010 was probably like the worst experience of my life ever. Um, and it was like done to, done to me by um, like a friend that I had had um, since like freshman year, the first semester of college. I was not aware of it at the time, but like he most likely drugged me. By the time he gave me like the fourth or fifth shot, I couldn't really, you know, defend myself. I just knew that something wasn't really right, but I wasn't really going to challenge it because I figured maybe I'm just over-exaggerating. Like, he's my friend. Why would anything bad ever come from this? So we went upstairs to my room and I was like really excited to show him like the new layout of my suite. And I, told, I was like going to show him like the artwork I had in the walls and stuff. And um, then like, you know, I'm like about to like show him and then he like takes my hand and like kind of like forces me to come to the bed. Basically, the last thing I remember is him like, like I really wanted to just get it over with and I told him like, you know, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna do this to me, let's just use a condom. So I like went over and grabbed one from like my dresser, got it, and then like, I just remember like blacking out. The majority of the time, people who commit assault are people who are known their family, their friends, their acquaintances, their partners, and lovers. Those are the people most often who are committing assault. Frequently, people are saying no and not being heard and are resisting, but not, you know, yelling, screaming down an alleyway. Um, They're so taken off guard by what's happening. People can freeze, people can become silent, people can start crying, and the person's still trying to become sexual with them. That is assault, that is rape. Yes, no means no. I was 14, I was sexually assaulted at a party that I had lied to my parents to be at and lied to them afterwards and I never told them about it until I was a parent because I had genuinely believed that it was my own fault and that wasn't their fault. That was the message I had gotten my entire life. Sophie, stay close. Thank you. My entire life from society at large. I have three daughters now. And I had two sisters growing up. And one in three women is a victim of sexual assault. And I know from experience that that is a low estimate. There's many, many more women than that who never report or who go through their lives not believing that what happened to them was rape. And it's profoundly terrifying to live in a world where I know that statistically speaking one of my children is going to be that person and I don't want to live in that world. The story goes that one police officer interrupted his colleague to say, I think we're beating around the bush here. I've been told I shouldn't say this, but women should stop dressing like sluts to avoid being victimized. And I saw this story and was livid. I was so angry and thought, I'm so sick and tired of seeing these kinds of things happen over and over and over again. It made me want to go down to Toronto Police Headquarters, bang on their door and tell them to do effing better. And my friend Sonia J.F. Burnett said, I think that's a great idea, I think you should. So later that day, we were talking and we decided that we were. We were going to channel our anger into something hopefully productive, which was taking, taking a stand, speaking out really loudly and saying, this is not okay and you have to be responsible now. You have to be accountable to what you're perpetuating and what you've done. Not just you as the individual, you the police force, you, you the p people in positions of power. Um, 
and we decided to call it Slut Walk uh, quite quickly, actually. It was not a lot of thought that went into it. Was it a knee-jerk reaction? Very much in part, because for us it captured what we wanted to say, what we wanted to do. We felt, you threw this out here at us and you were not the first. We want to throw it right back and say we have to talk about this language. We have to talk about the ways we talk about each other because that is what is blaming and shaming survivors. Media ended up hearing about the story somehow on, on social media. Media plays these two interesting roles because for us, we accessed social media as more accessible ways to get messages out. And then suddenly we were getting messages from people in other parts of Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand, in the States, in England, in Europe, saying we have these problems too. We face these same issues of victim blaming, of being told it's our fault, of being told it was what we, what we wore, how we acted. By the time that we reached where we ended, which was in front of the Toronto Police Headquarters, we took up the entire street. And looking out over this crowd of people and seeing people cry and seeing people hug each other and trying desperately not to cry myself because I knew if I cried one, if I shed one tear, I was going to lose it. So what I remember the most was this amazing mixed emotion of heartbreak and trauma and all of the things that come with doing this work and talking about sexual violence and living through sexual violence. So behind me is the dorm that I referenced and I was talking about the incident from the summer of 2010. Um, this is where I was raped over the summer and it's a place that I have to pass by on campus, you know, if I'm going to visit friends that live in that building still, or um, if I'm on a run, or going to the dining hall, um, it's right here. So there's always kind of that constant trigger. I officially told um, one of the officers in community standards, and then the case goes to trial. So I thought that going to them instead of the police would be easier on my emotional, um, you know, self and be a little bit more direct in getting what I wanted, which was to basically get him off campus. When the case was like appealed, um, like I was harassed by the actual perpetrator and then by um, one of his and my mutual friends. And the reaction from the police officer was that, you know, I shouldn't pursue this case like as a sexual assault victim because I hadn't come right when it happened. And they told me that rape was going to keep happening until the cows came home. Um, unless women stop spreading their legs like peanut butter. So obviously as a really traumatized victim, I felt like this was a second trauma, trauma to me, you know? Like not only just the police officer's words, but in general, the stalking, and then the following day, the university's failure to listen to what had happened to me and hold him accountable police and the justice system desperately need to learn more about what rape is, the realities of what happens, what survivors actually go through, heard from survivors. Um, they need to understand rape myths, like the idea that dressing differently will somehow protect you from being assaulted. I think I always thought that I was on one side of Slut Walk. I was offering support to other people, and that was my role, trying to create spaces where people felt like they could connect and feel safer. And I naively never imagined that I would actually be in a space to get support myself, which I have. By being an activist with Slow Walk, I've learned that it's okay to be controversial. It's okay to turn heads because turning heads means that people are listening and that they're looking at the controversy. So after I spoke, I got called in by the director of housing. I was a resident assistant at the time. It's basically what he told me before I could say anything was I heard your slut walk speech and what you said could have gotten you fired. And I was like, what? How could that have gotten me fired? I didn't, you know, lie. I didn't, you know, swear. I didn't do anything that would be possibly construed as, you know, grounds of firing. So I felt really uh, belittled. I felt minimized and like my voice was just shoved in the closet, you know? Um, and what I told him was all, with all due respect, sir, I don't care if it could have gotten me fired because I still said what I felt I needed to say. And um, I went ahead and forwarded my speech to pretty much everyone in the department for them to hear. If I could say anything to survivors, I would say to hold on because life gets better. And even if you think that, you know, things are never going to be brighter and you're never going to have a day without thinking you're just going completely insane, that's not true because you will learn to live better. Um, it takes time, you have to learn coping skills, 
but with supportive people around you and with universities that support you, with, with rules and regulations in place that, you know, tell, tell perpetrators that it's not okay to violate us, that helps. The thing I always want people to know is no matter what anybody sell, says, it was never your fault. It was not your fault before, it was not your fault during, and it's not your fault afterwards. When you're sexually assaulted, you didn't have a choice in the matter. Your consent is completely removed. It's not your responsibility, it's not your fault. We believe that, I believe that. And people will be in spaces of support to hear you, to recognize you, to understand that you did nothing wrong, and you're still valuable, and you're still wonderful, and you still have so much. We must not forget those who are not with us today. But, but their struggles should remain in our hearts and in our minds. And we must not forget that Slut Walk does not end today with a speech or a march or posting photos from the event on Facebook. This violence happens in every, every day, in every city, every state, and every nation. And fighting to create a world where all are safe entails our mindfulness, awareness, and action. We demand that the authorities finally take rape seriously by thoroughly investigating and prosecuting so that more rapists are convicted, men are generally discouraged from sexual violence, and women get the safety and justice we deserve. Because we will not be silenced by bullies and thugs and will speak openly, politically, and with conviction about important issues that affect us in the public space because we are justifiably angry. We will speak, write, march, run for office, and vote.